Okay. So I'm going to be talking just a bit of an introduction to uh, why we started this RTMS journey in 2003 uh, and the impact that it can potentially have on uh, particularly heavy vehicle uh, transport. Uh, this presentation is essentially about safety and sustainability. Um, the CEO already mentioned the importance of safety with Exoro and one of the key focus areas of, of the RTMS is safety. However, it actually originally started as a sustainability project in terms of protecting the road network. So originally the focus was on reducing overloading of heavy vehicles. But what we've also found in terms of sustainability is that um, we have a lot of small operators, emerging operators that are in the, in the business of freight transport. And often the smaller companies don't uh, implement basic fleet principles. But it's not, that's not just limited to the small companies. However, if, if a company, if you start off a company with a few trucks and you don't have these basics in place, the, the risk of going out of business in the next three to five years is very high. So we found that the RTMS has been a good framework for any transport company to get the basics right and therefore to, to promote sustainability. Um, so really when you see these uh, case studies today and then the presentation by Oliver which goes, in, goes into more detail about the requirements of the standard, you'll see it's about managing risk, it's about promoting compliance with the Road Traffic Act, but it's also very importantly about increasing productivity and this will come out uh, in, the, in the case studies. So from an economic point of view and from a safety point of view, uh, a high standard of road infrastructure is very important for any country and we actually have a very high standard of, of road infrastructure in, in South Africa compared with many countries throughout the world. In particular, our primary road, road network, which carries the bulk of, of heavy vehicle freight transport, is of a very high standard. Two weeks ago, we had uh, Les Bruiser from the National Heavy Vehicle Regulator in Australia out, and we presented two smart truck courses. And I drove <coughs> with Les from Pretoria down to Peter Maritzburg um, and back, and he was very complimentary of the standard of our um, national roads. However, when we look at some of the other things on that list, like incidents and crashes, breakdowns, compliance with traffic <coughs> regulation, safety and security, we fall very far short of, of international norms. So our crash rates and our fatalities on our roads is very, very high, unacceptably high. And in my opinion, it, it is a national crisis. The, the fatalities and serious injuries on our road is a national crisis. So we, we really need to think seriously about addressing this. So just a little video showing um, how quickly a crash can occur. Both of these clips are related to tire tires bursting. And the I think what hopefully will come through in this presentation is it's about safety, but it's also about the efficiency of the network, which gets seriously affected by crashes. And if you listen to the radio, I think even today there was a, a, a truck crash at Fountain Circle uh, in Pretoria. Uh, our road network, as I mentioned, our primary road network is, is in a very good uh, state. So you can drive from any of the major cities from one to the other and you'll seldom or if ever see a pothole. Uh, Sanral has got a very high standard in terms of dealing with potholes on, their, on the Sanral network, which is about 25,000 kilometers. However, we have seen some serious deterioration of some of our secondary roads and, and uh, local municipality roads, like these photos taken in Mpumalanga. And this has a very uh, significant impact on, uh, it has a negative impact on safety, but in particular on transport operating costs, or vehicle operating costs. And this was some work done with some imperial fleets where the actual
actual recorded maintenance and repair costs <coughs> on good roads was about a rand a kilometer this is a few years ago and it goes up by about 120 percent if those same trucks have to drive on a on a bad roads so from a from an economic and a global competitiveness point of view it's absolutely essential that we have good roads um, and these costs here exclude increased fuel consumption incre increased travel times and possible damage to goods. Um, Jörg Berger will be giving a ZZ2 case study and they have done a lot of work on monitoring the impact of the roads on the transport of tomatoes, which is their main major product. Um, vehicles, uh, we have some serious challenges regarding vehicles and um, um, some of you are probably aware of the Break and Tire Watch initiative that's run by Fleet Watch magazine and um, I've been involved in quite a number of them through the South African Road Federation, who is one of the partners. And to date, there have been 45 break and tire watch events. It's a two-day training course for traffic officers to promote a better understanding of um, compliance of brakes and tires, or non-compliance of brakes and tires of heavy vehicles. <coughs> And um, that, that's a list of some of them, not all of them. We had, a, we had the first break and tire watch in Namibia earlier this year. But on the first day of the training course is a theoretical lectures in a room like this. And then on the second day, it's practical out to a vehicle testing center, trucks are pulled off and inspected. And of the 757, what percentage, those of you who don't know the answer, <laughs> who would guess how many, what percentage of trucks have been were discontinued from use in all these training events. Ten, ninety, okay, two different extremes, but somewhere in between. About sixty-nine percent of all the vehicles that were inspected were discontinued from use. And if if you look at some of the defects, it's really scary. So you've got brake linings on the left there that should be in, in touching the the drum. And on the right, you can see gaps, big gaps, or in case, in some cases, the lining is gone, or even the brake, uh, the brake drip shoe has been removed. And there's some results from a, a roller brake tester, where you can see there's braking on the left or the right wheel, and on the other wheel, there's no braking. This is very, very common. Um, that maybe looks like a normal, nothing wrong with that photo, but in fact, the brake booster has been removed completely, so that <coughs> the wheel on the right has not got any brakes at all. Um, however, there is some excellence in Johannesburg. Uh, they are uh, doing some quite serious brake testing. So um, it's not all bad news. And um, wheel nuts, missing wheel nuts is very common. Um, and tires. Tires is probably the most critical uh, component of a truck because that's the interface between that load and the road. And we just see so many examples of, of tires that are uh, completely unacceptable. Load securement is also something that's often not done properly. Um, I hope none of them are your trucks. Okay, the guys at the back took a while to. Um, but this is a this shows uh, fatal crash rates per hundred million kilometers heavy vehicle fatal crash rates. This was a project I was involved in a, a while ago, 2010, moving freight with better trucks. A number of countries were involved in the in the study, and South Africa's fatal crash rate stood out. That's the line at the top about 10 per 100 million kilometers. <coughs> so you can see we, we're way out of line with um, international practice. And I think the, one of the, the points is that these types of crashes where you get long uh, hours, many hours of lane closures, has a very negative impact on tra uh, transport efficiency. So this is Town Hill in Peter Maritzburg on the N3. And in this case, you, there are quite a number of uh, instances of breakdowns or crashes where lanes are closed, the trucks stand, the, the light motor vehicles are diverted onto the other route. 
onto the R103, and this is just not good for the economy. If it happens once a month, maybe you know it's acceptable, but it's happening literally on a weekly basis. So I've just touched on some of the challenges in freight transport um, on the roads. Uh, we'll be talking a little bit more about driver fitness, uh, reckless driver behavior, and the impact that it has. Bribery and corruption is a serious, serious problem in South Africa, and in particular on the roads. And really what it does is it perpetuates bad driving behavior or overloading or speeding or whatever the, the non-compliance might be. It means that certain transport operators build a practice and have a practice or policy in their business, and it just means that those unroadworthy trucks continue to be on the roads without stopping that behavior. And the result of these uh, inputs is poor road safety, high cost of transport, deterioration of the infrastructure, and high levels of emissions. So the National Overload Control Strategy was, was carried out in 2002-2003 by the CSIR for the National Department of Transport. And uh, besides the sort of traditional approaches to try and improve overload control, which you can see on the slide, in the middle is a block there that says self-regulation. And this was as a result of uh, being attending some international conferences on heavy vehicles and seeing, recommending that maybe we need to look at self-regulation or promoting self-regulation to try and complement law enforcement. Because law enforcement is, was obviously not being uh, is successful or effective. And we also in there put in the performance-based standards approach, which um, I'll be talking about a bit later. So this all started as a recommendation of a national overload control strategy in 2002. Uh, a significant input was the Australian National Heavy Vehicle Accreditation Scheme, uh, which was a, um, used as a basis to develop a South African standard. Originally it was ARP 067 in 2007, and then uh, it was published in 2014, SANS 3095, and that's the standard that Oliver will be going into more detail. It was recently, uh, earlier this year, it was um, a second edition was published, and that was the one which now incorporates consignees and consignors into one standard. Bef before, there were three parts. Uh, the first one was for transport operators, and then one for consignees and one for consignors. So the, the accreditation that, that uh, Exoro was handed over now, the certificate, was based on the new standard, which is uh, 2019. So, I think that the, the RTMS is a management system standard. It's industry-led, government-supported, it's voluntary, although some consignors can require it. As if you want to do work for them, it could be a, a, pre a prerequisite. But it's focusing on consignors, consignees, and transport operators to implement a management system standards with those outcomes which are in green. So we want to protect the road infrastructure, which, as I said earlier, is critical if you want to operate an efficient and uh, profitable transport business, improving road safety and, and increasing productivity. Uh, South Africa's logistics costs are very high compared to a lot of other countries. A lot of it is to do with where our, our industries and our mines are, a long way from the coast. We don't have big rivers that a lot of other countries have, so they can transport bulk goods on canals or rivers with uh, barges. We don't have that. So we either have to transport our goods by rail or by road. And as you know, rail is, is um, the efficiency and effectiveness of rail has declined uh, quite considerably. So I'm sure most of you know what the board looks like. So the management system standard is SANS 3095, but we also have an accreditation scheme, which is um, done, done through SANAS, and um, that's the board that an operator can put on the front of their truck uh, once they uh, meet the certification requirements. Oliver will go into this in a lot more detail in the next presentation. But there, there are basically four main pillars which uh, are covered in 13 elements in the standard. And it's all about keeping having a policy in your business, 
uh, implementing it, keeping records, so that when your annual audit is done, the auditor can satisfy himself that you are actually impl implementing the requirements of the standard. But then there's the um, very important element of continual improvement. So wherever, wherever you are, in whatever uh, KPI that you're looking at, it could be overloading, it could be speeding, it could be driver training, your, your objective is to improve. The, the membership of the RTMS has grown quite significantly over the last 10 years. Currently there are around 300 fleets that are certified, representing about 18,000 trucks and buses, and I think I can't remember what the figure is, 20, I think Adrian's got it, about 23 or 24,000 trailers. Um, so the big impact, uh, surprisingly enough, the, 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 the road of standards started out as a, with an objective of protecting the road infrastructure, which is a key element of road freight transport. Based on case studies, and you'll see it probably today with most of the case studies, that the positive impacts of the standard have been on vehicle maintenance, particularly trailers, and most importantly on drivers. So by paying more attention to driver training, driver health, and managing fatigue, there have been very positive spin-offs. So that includes uh, reduction in breakdowns, reduction in fines, reduction in absenteeism, um, and very importantly, a reduction in fuel consumption as a result of better driver training. The support from the, the Department of Transport and government has been good over the years. Unfortunately, we did invite people from National DIT to the workshop today, but um, unfortunately, uh, we didn't have anyone coming. But you can see in this fourth pillar of the road freight strategy, reference to self-regulation and road safety. So this was one of the previous workshops we had up in Polokwane that is the Deputy Minister, previous Deputy Minister of Transport handing over his certificates. This was a function down in um, Nelspreg for Bus Corps and the previous Minister of Transport was present as well as the MEC. And then we had a function a few years ago when Golden Arrow Bus Services achieved their certification down in Cape Town and also the, minister, the previous Minister of Transport and the MEC. I just want to end off with a few um, references to some case studies. In this case, it's reference to the forestry industry, which was where this um, uh, RTMS started. And when we, when we started with the baseline in 2003, over 30% of the timber trucks were overloaded. That's now measuring the trucks when they deliver their timber to the mill. So we're getting a hundred, more or less 100% sample. And this is uh, pulp and paper in uh, KwaZulu-Natal and in Pumalanga. And what you can see from that graph is from about 20, beginning of 2015, for the last four years, um, almost five years, the overloading has been hovering between one and two percent. So from th over 30 percent, it's consistently now been reduced. And this is measuring between 20 and 28,000 trips a month. So it's quite a big um, sample. <laughs> And then there's a similar, been a similar trend in the sugar industry in those same two provinces, where for the last four years, the overloading has been less than 1%. And that red solid line shows you the average payload, which initially it dropped a bit, because now, remember, they're cutting, they're reducing overloading significantly. But just through proper payload management, the average payload uh, has actually increased to around about 26 tons. Uh, this is a city of Cape Town. They're the only government fleet that are certified. Um, although there's one of their sister uh, divisions, it's, uh, what's it, Oliver? Stormwater. Water and sanitation. Water and sanitation recently got certification as well. So they're actually two government fleets, but they're both part of the city of Cape Town. Um, You'll see there that their fleet size is almost a thousand vehicles, so, but a lot of small LDVs with aerial platform cranes. Um, and as part of their RTMS implementation, they did a strategy. They reduced their stock replacement cycle from 33 to 8 to 50 years. They did a functional <coughs> alignment uh, review. 
it started off at only 40%, they improved it to 85%. Their fleet availability improved from 65 to 92%. And service schedule attainment from 47 to 98%. So that's the kind of thing one would do when implementing a standard. The standard is to see where you are, identify gaps, and then set some uh, policies or procedures and action plans to improve. Um, so here you can see the monitoring of the service uh, schedule attainment, um, fleet availability monitoring, and then on the, on the right, average number of repairs and maintenance work orders per vehicle per year. You can see the improvement there. Um, also speeding, that's normally quite a challenge for operators to get speeding under control. Um, but here you can see the monitoring and monitoring of traffic uh, violations and fleet incident rate. These are just examples of what a company is doing to monitor certain KPIs. So of significance is their uh, fuel consumption over nine years reduced by 24%, probably well, mostly due to improved driver training. And then the second one, Danny is, she's still outside probably. But she used to work for Dawn Logistics. They, were, they had 13 depots around the country and she got all 13 depots certified over a period of a year. And this just shows some of the improvements that they measured from 2013 to 2017. In terms of a reduction in fines, reduction in crashes, significant reduction in crashes due to driver error and then breakdowns. Um, as I said, speeding is, is normally a, quite a challenge. Using a telematics with a definition for speeding events, they had 60,000 in 2014. That's of the fleet of 200 trucks. So about 300 speeding events per truck per year. And through improved management of, of speeding, in 2017 it was just less than 5,000 speeding events, which is 19 per truck per year. And that is an example of risk management. Because if you've got your trucks that are speeding on a regular, a very frequent basis, your risk of, of crashes, etc., is is greatly increased. And they also measured a significant uh, reduction in fuel consumption from 2013 to 2017, 23%. And they uh, attributed that mainly to improve maintenance processes and improve driver behavior. So what I've tried to do is highlight the challenges out there. I think it's very serious for our country in terms of safety, but also in terms of um, transport efficiency. Um, I think I've highlighted the high levels of non-compliance. The brake and tire watch is only looking at brakes and tires plus a few other things uh, license is expired and that. It doesn't focus on overloading, it obviously doesn't focus on speeding. So if you add all these things together, you can say that a large percentage of heavy vehicles on our road network are um, not compliant. And the impact of law enforcement is very small. So if you consider all the truck trips that are on the road today, probably not nearly 5% of them would be subject to some form of law enforcement. So we're trying to move that vertical line towards the right. So irrespective of law enforcement, improve compliance on the road, and at the same time, reduce fatalities and um, reduce transport costs. So thank you, that's my sort of introductory presentation.